Namaste. Welcome to Youth TV show Global Perspectives. Our guest for today's episode is Sri Ram Ramakrishna. He is a professor at National University of Singapore. Nanotechnology. It's about uh, new products, uh, engineering them at a level uh, normal eye cannot see. Uh, you can imagine a thickness of paper on which we write, let's say it's about 100 microns. We are talking about a thousand times smaller than the thickness of a paper. So at that level, uh, we are engineering uh, materials, uh, medicine molecules, uh, encapsulating them and training them to reach parts of the body otherwise difficult to reach. You can imagine uh, going to a hospital where you need to do a series of tests and you would spend several hours. With this nanotechnology, a small sample of your blood or body fluid can be analyzed for a number of things and diseases that are in the early stage can be tracked. So that is uh, usefulness of this technology. Uh, when it comes to medicines, uh, most of the time uh, we take medicines, uh, they have a side effects and reason for side effect is the dosage and the dosage is normally larger because the medicine has to reach uh, from your gut or from the bloodstream to the place where it is needed. So that's why they use higher dosage for it to actually reach that point. So with the nanotechnology you can uh, create a, a drug or a medicine at a much smaller quantity and it can be delivered to the place it is needed. So we are beginning to see uh, new forms of medicine uh, that applies nanotechnology concepts and it's being uh, applied in a number of uh, drug formulations. Uh, some of them are already in the use. Uh, many of these uh, nanotechnology products are a little bit more expensive, uh, primarily because medical research uh, requires large amounts of money uh, for testing the safety, efficacy and effectiveness. Uh, that, that involves many years of research and development, also productization. And that's the reason why uh, they become more expensive. But obviously uh, billions of people uh, that would not be able to uh, find resources to access this kind of uh, new technology based uh, healthcare product. Uh, with time, with scalability, uh, I have already seen uh, the prices uh, for certain applications are coming down and some of the diagnostic kits, they're actually very affordable and you find them in several hospitals in uh, both emerging countries as well as the high income countries and you find them uh, much more far and widely accessed. So my guess is uh, with time, the market forces will bring down the costs. And of course, uh, more efforts from the emerging countries are also needed so that uh, that goal of taking the technology to benefit more number of people uh, with their affordable prices is met. The new generation, uh, that's what we call millennials, uh, many of them have access to uh, digital technology products. With that, they're able to seek out information, search information, or exchange some of these uh, interesting things among themselves. And these are actually motivating them to, as you said, uh, look at how to be more innovative, how to be entrepreneurial. So they are beginning to be much more interested. Second reason is uh, nowadays uh, with the best examples of the techies around the world, that is uh, they are serving as role models for the next generation, so they are getting motivated. So for them, what is the way forward is um, uh, they would have to uh, seek necessary skills and knowledge and a network so that they can succeed in innovation as well as entrepreneurship. I think they are motivated to change the world. They are motivated to contribute. And I think as they make progress, they, they would feel more happy. And with that, they would get more energy to do much more effectively. So the strategy means by its nature, you strategize by deeply understanding things. So for any program or project to be effective, when you are strategizing, you are basically understanding a multi-dimensional aspect of the project. And then you think which one would have a reasonable chance of success 
and you adopt a particular way of doing it and reaching out to it. So for example, uh, many students, they will have a dream, I want to be this. It's a dream. Then they'll start looking around for information and then eventually uh, with the help of experienced people, their own understanding, they will come up with a particular strategy and they will pursue it. Along the way they would adjust it because the future is not so predictable most of the time. So you would fine tune it and make it much more uh, doable, seek the results or achieve the results uh, you want to get. So bottom line is that strategy is central to a way of thinking about deeply multidimensional way and then finding uh, possible solutions and finally acting on a few of them or one of them and see how it would actually produce the result. I want to explain by saying what it takes for really productizing a technology products. Uh, when you start with an idea, then you do the basic study, but afterwards you actually uh, set up an infrastructure and resources to productize it. This later stage, what we call um, later stage development, requires significant amounts of money. So this is where a private sector really need to play a role in every country. In most uh, high income countries, in fact, their developmental projects, uh, two thirds of the national cost would come from the private sector. Let's say a country is spending $100 billion. Uh, you could imagine $75 billion is actually being spent by the private sector and $25 billion is spent by the government. So it is needed because of the high costs involved in the product development and producing them large quantities that is needed for the market. Now, but if they have less oversight and would they uh, find shortcuts and wanting to take the products to the market in a shorter way. Uh, this happens, uh, this is part of uh, how the market forces, business world and uh, things that drive. So what keeps this whole process and checks and balances is active uh, citizenry. That means people are aware of it and they talk about it, they question it. And in the process, the best products would survive. Not so good products that are uh, made on the shortcut process would go away. So I think the way is um, you would still want to encourage a private sector investment because it's needed for productization and a scalability, but at the same time, you could provide checks and balances by active citizenry groups where they talk about it and it's widely transparently discussed so that people are aware of it and those which would withstand uh, the needs and demands of the market, those products will continue to upgrade. Those which are not meeting, they would fall away. I think if we can repeat that question all the time, every day, why and how, I think they would become entrepreneurs, they would become innovators. So to me, that's what happened to me all my life. I was curious about everything. So all the time I had a question pops up. So I think this is underlying basis for everyone, whichever sector, whichever field they choose, if they start asking the questions in terms of the why, and they would eventually ask the best forms of whys, and then eventually they will also find best forms of how, so these two are very powerful tools to be a very good innovator and a very good entrepreneur, finally actually make a difference to the world. You can follow us at facebook.com Leadership Academy KTM. We will be back next week with a new episode of Youth TV show, Namaste.